So in keeping with the Nickelodeon theme, I've decided to do my top 10 Nicktoons. Now, full disclosure, this is not going to be a list of every Nicktoon ever. Obviously, I'm only choosing 10. Originally, I was going to choose 5, but I was very indecisive about that, so I've decided I'm just going to do 10. Um, the list is going to be from 10 to 1 with 3 honorable mentions before number 1. I know some people don't like honorable mentions, but that's how I'm choosing to do the list, and that's just how the cookie crumbles. So, I figure we'll go ahead and start, with all further ado, this is all uh, just full disclosure, this is just my opinion, this has nothing to do with any objective fact or objective reality, this is just how I like these Nicktoons, and... This is in no way a judge of overall quality in terms of objective quality. This is just my opinions and my opinions alone. All the disclaimers out of the way, let's get into it. So number 10 is Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold is... Well, it's all right. It's, it's okay. I went back and rewatched it recently and I felt like it was not as solid a show as I remember watching as a kid. I watched it all the time in the early 2000s, because it was on all the time in the early 2000s. Don't remember if I caught the original run or not, but this is a show that I can very easily praise the soundtrack and the atmosphere. And that's about it. Everything else is very hit or miss for me. I like some characters, I don't like others. I like some storylines and episodes, I don't like others. It's not good enough for me to consider in the top five, but it is in my top ten. It is watchable. I would recommend watching through the series at least once and then coming to your own conclusions, but this is a show that often gets praised for doing so many different things ahead of its time, and in reality, I really don't see that here. This is a show that is praised for having so many deep themes, but yet it's a kid's cartoon. That's often what it gets praised for. It's, it tackles deeper issues. And it alludes to deeper issues. But frankly, if I'm a kid watching this, I want to laugh. I want to see somebody get hurt. I want to see something funny. I don't really want to have to deal with the serious. And I think that that's one of the reasons why, as a kid, I wasn't as much of a fan of this series as some others were. The drama was a little bit laid on a little too thick at some times. And it just, it doesn't really feel like it earns that. And the uh, Jungle movie they did, the most recent remake movie, was just terrible. It was just terrible. It was... I liked hearing some of the returning voice actors and actresses, but it just... No. No, I couldn't I couldn't finish it. I, I ended up skipping around a lot because I was so bored. I just didn't want to watch this thing play out. It took itself way too seriously. Didn't like it. Didn't enjoy it. I know plenty of fans of the series did. If you're a fan of the series, I'm sure the Jungle movie does everything you want it to, but for me, I just... No. Nah, I wasn't a fan. But the show itself is fine. The original movie that was with the show, I don't remember. I don't remember ever having seen it, but people I heard people say it was bad. So I didn't even bother really looking at it before I made this. So Pretty decent show. Overall, it is definitely... It's earned its number 10 spot. It's, it's not the greatest, but it is good. And I can, I can confidently call it good. So moving on to number 9... We have Ah Real Monsters. This is an interesting one. It's it's the second Klasky Chupo show, to my knowledge, that they produced for Nickelodeon. And in many ways, it's very underrated. It it premises its basic premise is that there's a human world and there's a monster world. And in the monster world, they have sort of a uh, monster academy where they all learn how to be monsters, how to scare humans, and they need to scare humans to survive. And it really fleshes out its world very well. You've got three monsters that it centers around, three students, and the wacky adventures and hijinks they get into whenever they leave the monster world, which is basically just a dump in New Jersey, and go scaring around in New York City. So, on its basic premise, it doesn't do anything necessarily groundbreaking, but it really fleshes out its world. It, um, it tells you why monsters need to scare people, which is to survive, and that... Things in the human world are actually toxic to them. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I think Monsters Inc. blatantly ripped this off. They, they blatantly stole from these concepts. I would not be surprised. Uh, but I don't think it was worth uh, taking legal action over. But it's, it's blatantly clear that there were some elements ripped straight from this and put straight into Monsters, Inc. So that's fascinating. But I do think it is an underrated show more than an overrated. The reason it's number nine, however, 
is because it didn't really run for very long, and some of the voice performances are great, and others really just aren't. Um, Oblina, the girl, voiced by uh, Christine Kavanaugh. I think it's Christine Kavanaugh. I might be. I hope I'm getting the name right. All right, hold on. Let me just get out the old Google machine because I don't want to get this wrong. I'm not above doing this for a top ten list. I uh, no sir. So I don't want to get this information wrong. I'm 95% sure it's Christine Kavanaugh. I almost said Rebecca Kavanaugh, but I don't believe it's Rebecca Kavanaugh. I believe it's Christine. All right, here we go. Ah, uh, real monsters. Yes, yeah, Christine Kavanaugh. May she rest in peace. Voice of Chucky Finster and Oblina, I believe her name is. And a couple of other characters that I can't really think of off the top of my head. But she, I mean, God bless her. She just, I, I wasn't a fan of her performance in this. She laid on the accent way too thick. And it just sounded like Chucky Finster trying to do a British accent. So that, that kind of annoyed me throughout the series. And um, I mean, it was funny. It was very funny. But it just didn't stick with me. It, it really didn't. And um Towards the end, I was like, I don't know that I want to finish this. It really just wasn't. But it is underrated. I think it's it's a lot better than I remember it initially being. So it definitely gets points for that. So moving right along to number eight, which is All Grown Up. Now, All Grown Up, another classic Geo Post series. It is the sequel series to Rugrats. It's basically when the Rugrats are in middle school? High school? I don't remember. Uh, high school. No, school. Uh, middle school. Preteen. So they're basically tweens. Wikipedia says tweens, adolescents. So they're, they're in that early stage. So they go from babies to that. And they premiered the show as an episode of Rugrats, which I think was really cool. They did a really cool transition scene for that. I, I really liked it. It's based on an episode of Rugrats called All Growed Up. And it was a uh, it was a success. I've heard people say they don't like this show, and to be fair, the first half of the show was great, but when they, they when they got to the point where they changed the character designs, I think that's when people kind of said, eh, this is this is falling off. And I agree with that, because the first show was really, really good. It really fleshed out these characters that Rugrats really didn't have an opportunity to, because they were babies. I mean, yeah, they gave them personalities as babies and all of this, but they, they put them in scenarios that were more realistic than the scenarios that they got into as infants. So it's really cool, and it's, see, it's cool seeing those characters evolve to that point. It's a really neat concept, and um, I wouldn't be surprised with... The reboot of Rugrats, if they end up rebooting this too, I, I think that's that's likely to happen. But I'm not I'm not doing bets on it because I'm not sure. But I like it a lot. I like the way the episodes were structured. I like the characterizations. I like that it was it basically felt like Rugrats, but all grown up, and it it succeeded at what it set out to do. And I think that that's that's a really good way to follow up a very successful series is. Take it to its next natural evolution. You take a series like that to a place where a lot of people who may have been young kids at that time might have been at the point where All Grown Up started. I remember it premiered right after the Kids' Choice Awards. Um, which Kids' Choice Awards was it that it premiered after? Was it 2000? Yeah, 2003. So, really, really good Klasky Chupo tune. And... Their stuff is very hit or miss as the years go on, and this one is definitely a hit, at least the first half of the series. I, I just remember the second half not being as great. Maybe that's me misremembering, but I just remember it being a lot of fun to watch, so I felt like it was definitely worth being on this list. Not quite top five, but definitely, definitely good. And then the next one is going to surprise people because it is outside of the top five, and this one has somewhat of a rabid fan base, but that is... Avatar The Last Airbender at number seven. Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, I mean, what can be said about it that hasn't already been said? It's it's one of the most successful Western animes out there. 
and it deals heavily in a sort of fantasy setting with uh, Taoism. In a sense, it, it kind of is literal with, I believe, Taoism. Um, it uses the themes of the elements, and people are able to control the elements. They're called benders. There's firebenders, waterbenders, earthbenders, and airbenders. So there's four elements. And the Avatar is the only human being that can control all of them, and he has to grow and learn to be a true Avatar, and the series is about him going around the world and doing this. And uh, each each season is chopped up based on its element. And there's so there's four seasons total, and it's it's good. It's very good. The reason it's not in my top five. This show struggles with being essentially an anime. For all of the good a anime elements, it's got the bad. It's got drama. It's got a lot of drama. It insists upon itself. And for pe many people, that works. It's no big deal. But for me, it uh, they laid it on thick. There were some weird choices they made in terms of how to characterize some of the people. And some of the... There was a lot of will they, won't they with the romantic relationships and with the tensions between, like, uh, Aang and uh, Zuko. You know, will Zuko kill him? Won't he kill him? They did that a lot, and that started to wear on my nerves. It was like, eventually, yeah, just, j he's going to become an ally. You know, they're setting, they're setting him up for that, and he does. And that's kind of how the series ends, is he defeats the Fire Lord and kind of fulfills the prophecy. Um, good universe. I really like the universe. I like the way that the show looks. I like it the way it's designed. I like the character designs. I like, I like most things about the series, but it's... It's a different kind of Nicktoon. It's it's not like a traditional Nicktoon, which Nickelodeon has a history of doing, and it tends to work out for them. But it's not... If I'm in a funny mood, I'm not going to watch Avatar, unless it's a very specific episode where it's, where it's comedic over everything else. Other than that, I'm not going to watch it, because it just... It takes itself way too seriously as sort of a Western anime. It's just... No, no thank you. So... Gonna move right along. That's number seven. Still a good show. Would definitely recommend anybody watch it. I mean, it's it's worth watching through at least once again. Most of the shows that I talk about are gonna be worth watching at least once. So keep your eye on those series. If you haven't watched them before, go ahead and do it. Number five is going to be The Fairly Odd Parents. Now, The Fairly Odd Parents. Tremendous show. Absolutely fantastic. The first season, amazing. The second season, amazing. Subsequent seasons, pretty amazing. Butch Hartman leaves. Eh, even, even before he leaves. Eh. The show had a problem to where it was it was becoming the next SpongeBob, really. That's what was happening to it. It just kept going and going. And as a result, the quality started to dip. And they started to add characters to the show. Just permanent additions to the show. Including a second child for the fairies to interact with. And... It just, no, absolutely no. It was a solid series. It, it's, it, it had Spongebob syndrome, where the first four seasons are pretty good. And it's probably more than the first four seasons with Fairly Odd Parents. But after that, there's a, there's a jump-off point for the series to where it just starts to go downhill. When they, when they introduce... The first new character, which is the fairy's baby, Poof, and then they introduce uh, Chloe, which is the second child that they work with. It just falls off a cliff. It really just falls off a cliff for me, and I just have no interest in it as a series. The The first half of the series had so much comedy, so much heart. It had some good specials, a uh, good special movie. Then they had a live-action movie for some reason, and then... To add insult to injury, once they canceled the show, they made a later on they made a live action version, which was just trash, just awful. I just the worst possible idea Nickelodeon could ever have. It just no. Everything about it was just insulting. And nobody liked it. And it didn't last. I don't even think it made it, it made one season, I think, and then that was just no. No more. No more. Either revive the series as it was or just don't continue at all. You know? Absolutely not. But for that first half, it is it is up there with SpongeBob and some of the classic Nicktoons as being one of the best. It is 
definitely in my top five. I can go back and watch those first couple seasons very easily. It's a lot of fun. In fact, I might end up doing that tonight because it just I'm I'm already thinking of episodes that made me laugh my butt off. So definitely number five, the Fairly Odd Parents. All right, so number four is Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, which is based on the 2001 Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius TV show. Um, the full title is The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, whereas the movie is just called Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. I guess that's their best way at avoiding confusion. Jimmy Neutron, The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius is great. It's a show where I looked at it and I said, uh, CG animation, I don't like that. I don't like doing a TV show that looks like that. Because up at that point, up till that point, the only shows that were doing that were kind of preschool and kiddie. Visually, it's just, no, I'm, I don't think I'm going to like this. But then I watched it. And I was like, this is freaking funny. This is hilarious. I love this. And it is. It is very funny. I love Jimmy, Sheen, and Carl. I love the dynamics between them and Retroville. I love how Jimmy's genius is a vehicle for them to travel all across the world, and in some cases across the universe. I just, I love it. It's great. It's got a great sense of comedy, and when I go back and watch it, I notice jokes that I missed when I was a kid. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's funny. That was an adult joke. That was great. Um... Any complaints I have about this series, one of the most common complaints you will hear is the fact that Jimmy is basically the cause of all of the problems within the show's continuity. And they're absolutely right. Jimmy is the cause of pretty much everything that goes wrong. Whether it's extraterrestrial contact, whether it's an experiment that he's doing gone awry, it's almost always his fault. And the show goes out of his way to point this out in a very specific episode whose name escapes me. But it's when they have a Neutron family reunion. And his aunt basically points out who's angry all the time. She says, the whole reason that everything wrong ever goes on around here is because of Jimmy. That's why I don't like, that's why I don't like your son. It's a bit cruel because she's saying that to Hugh and uh, uh, Judy. I couldn't think of the mother's name. She's saying it to them. And she says it basically to Jimmy's face. Uh, that episode, they end up redeeming him a little bit. They kind of forget that he's the reason for everything going wrong because he saves them in the moment, which is a little bit odd, but... I mean, it's a good it's a good commentary on basically the the structure of the show, and for a lot of people, they're they're able to just ignore this element because the rest of the show is so good. But whenever people go back to review it in retrospect, they go, "Yeah, you know, he's kind of a villain of this story at the same time as being the hero." You know, you really pay attention to why things happen the way they do. It's it's pretty much his fault, and he never really learns his lesson. So, I think that's a fair criticism of the show. But everything else, as far as I can tell, is fine. Maybe you've got some nitpicks that I don't, but I think it's a fine show. I think it's a really fine show. And then moving on to number three, we're getting into the top three now, is Invader Zim. My goodness, Invader Zim. Invader Zim would have been a top contender for me for number one, to be honest with you, because everything it does is great. It really is. Everything it does is great. They had... It's one of the Nicktoons that got a revival movie, and the revival movie is the best revival movie I've seen out of the lot. It's even better than the revival movie for my number one series, which I'll get to when I get to it. But it is the best revival movie. It's, it, it's like an episode of the show, beat for beat. It's already been memed on. It's just... It's tremendous. It really is spectacular. I love the animation. The voice acting is out of this world. No pun intended. It is great. I love the lore of the show. I love the world building. I love the animation. The way that they, they use a sort of 3D on 2D. And the soundtrack. I, I, it is just great. It is just great. Only criticism I have, extremely minor, is it gets a little bit into the uncanny valley and it gets a little bizarre for even its own tastes. But eh, it's just that that's me reaching for something at this point to say negative about the show because it is it is really good. It is it's a show that I'm at some point going to try to get on on physical media because it's just it's awesome. It's really, really good. Uh really, really good. And then number two, Nicktoon of all time. SpongeBob SquarePants. Now, I'm sure a lot of people thought that this was going to be number one because I do the SpongeBob retrospective and I talk about how it's one of the greatest shows I've ever seen. I can't put it at number one because it suffers from itself. 
SpongeBob is a great series from seasons one to four, and then it is a mixed bag of nuts from then on. It goes up, it goes down, and then it slightly crawls back up, and then it goes down, and then it becomes episode by episode. It's still a watchable show, but it's those first four seasons are some of the best television I've ever seen in my entire life. They are so funny. I know many of the lines by heart. It is great. What can I say about it? I mean, it's SpongeBob. It's a, it's a cultural icon at this point. He is Nickelodeon at this point. And that's kind of the hole they dug for themselves is they've done so much SpongeBob that SpongeBob is just the network now. He is just the face of the network. A very porous face of the network. So, SpongeBob. All right, now before we get into number one, I'm going to do the honorable mentions, the ones that didn't quite make it into the list, but are still worthy of being talked about nevertheless, because they are solid, and I could only fit so much onto the list, so I am doing an honorable mention. These are shows that uh, I think you should see at least once, and I will just quickly go over them, because some of them, I, I did a Toonie talk on at least two of them, so... I won't go into too much detail about the ones that I already did Toonie Talks on. So, I've got three honorable mentions. Number three, Ren and Stimpy. Solid, bizarre, crazy, off the wall. Really great. Definitely should watch it. First season's a little rough at points, but it picks up very quickly, and it gets going very quickly, and it's a, it's a fun romp once it really gets tuned up. Number two... The Angry Beavers. The Angry Beavers is... Well, it's... It feels like a Nicktoon. It feels like a Nicktoon. It feels like it was crafted specifically for Nickelodeon. And because it has that feel, I don't think it would work on any other network. It has got Slapstick out the wazoo. It's got Charm. The episodes are very unique. The voice acting is great. It's, it's awesome. Uh, the soundtrack is okay. It's not... It's not as memorable as some of the other Nicktoons, in my opinion, but I love the setting. I love the fact that it's based on two animals, and they interact with humans, and the, the animals and the humans kind of have this weird sort of symbiosis that just only works in the setting of a cartoon. It doesn't really work anywhere else. Um, the design of the characters is just really fantastic, really unique. I'd love to see that in a comic. I wonder if they made a comic for it. So... Very neat. And then lastly, Doug. Nickelodeon's Doug. The Nickelodeon run of Doug was really quintessential slice of life. And it was a founding Nicktoon. It was one of the first three, be the other two being Ren and Stimpy and Rugrats. Um, Rugrats didn't make it onto this list for me. Uh, just, I like Rugrats, but I don't like it enough to put it on a list. It's just, it's all right. It's it's okay. I, I was going to try to fit it in here somewhere, but I decided against it because you either love Rugrats or you're just kind of, you, you either love or hate, or you're sort of indifferent. I'm sort of indifferent to it. I watched it when it was on. I've been going through and watching it again. It's still technically ongoing with this new reboot, so, yeah, it, there's plenty of other places you can go and hear varying opinions about Rugrats. I'm, I'm not going to weigh in on that. The closest I did was All Grown Up. I think I like that better than the later seasons of Rugrats, so it is what it is. All right, so that's it for the honorable mentions, and so finally, we get to the number one Nicktoon. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Rocco's Modern Life. Rocco's Modern Life is the best Nicktoon that I have ever seen, in my personal opinion. It's if you took Ren and Stimpy and SpongeBob together, if you took Ren and Stimpy and SpongeBob and you mash them together, you get Rocco's Modern Life is the best way I can describe it. It's got some of the bizarre physical humor of Ren and Stimpy but some of the comedic timing of Spongebob. And the creator of Spongebob was a writer on it, Stephen Hillenburg. It is perhaps my favorite Nicktoon of all time because of the way it executes its stories and the way its characters are portrayed. The art style, Joe Murray's art style to me is legendary. You've got things that are in weird proportions. You've got weird eye shapes sometimes. But... It's just, it all comes together to make something really special and something that he was able to sort of replicate in Camp Laszlo when he did that over on Cartoon Network, but I think Rocco's is definitely better than that show. And I love Camp Laszlo, too, because it, it feels very much like a continuation of Rocco's. But Rocco's is just... 
I mean, I love almost every character on that show. I love almost every episode. There's not a whole lot of episodes that I really don't like. There's a couple of them. But even the ones that I don't like, I can find good elements to them because it's just so well done. There's the the comedy is is nonstop funny. And a show that's nonstop funny for me is a show that I'm gonna be tuning into every opportunity that I can. And I did whenever it was on. It wasn't on mainline Nickelodeon a lot by the time I got around to it. It was more so on Nicktoons. I was always excited whenever we would get the preview of Nicktoons because I knew I was gonna see Rocco's Modern Life. And then years later, when I was in high school, I ended up buying a Rocco's Modern Life t-shirt. Either I was in high school or I was in my 20s. I don't remember which, but I ended up getting a nice Rocco's Modern Life t-shirt, which I still have, and it sadly doesn't fit. I would have wore it for this video had I known, but sadly, it just does not fit anymore, and I don't know where it is, but I know I still have it. At least I believe I still have it. It is... The fact that I still haven't gotten the complete series on DVD is mind-boggling i don't know why i'm wasting my time waiting but it is a fantastic show now about future schlock the movie i think it's is it future schlock no it's uh static cling future schlock is the final episode um i believe that's the final episode of the uh of the series but about static cling no, I didn't like it. No, sir, I did not like it. I thought that that movie was a betrayal of everything Rocco was. I thought that that movie was needlessly political, and it was a catch... It, it wasn't even... No, it wasn't Catch-22. That's the complete wrong phrase. It was a bait-and-switch. Because it starts out like a Rocco's episode, and you're thinking, this is going to be as good as something like the Invader Zim movie, whose name escapes me, uh... Enter the Florpus, was it? I think that was the Invader Zim movie title. Static Kling tried to be faithful, but then it had to hamstring in a political message for no reason. No reason. Other than that, does it stay faithful to the series? From what I've seen, yes, but I haven't bothered to watch it because I just, I'm tired of that. I'm tired of creators doing that. I'm tired of them hamstringing in political messaging where it has no place to be. It has no place to be. They use this as a vehicle to demonize the 90s and to say that you've got to move on with the times. And I really hate when shows do that. That's condescending. That's wrong. I don't like it. So I completely disavow Static Cling. I don't like the movie. There's nothing that anybody can say that can change my mind on the movie. It is, I'm done with it. I don't, I don't like it. I, Rocco's for me ended with that final episode. So, that's all I have to say. But it is my favorite Nicktoon of all time. And they, they can never take that away from me. It is absolutely one of the best Nicktoons I've ever seen. Back in its original run, it was just great. The, the movie, not so much, but that can be easily ignored. But that's it. That's my top 10 Nicktoons. I know there's a lot of Nicktoons missing that I didn't talk about, many that I've seen, but the ones that come immediately to memory, ones that I've re-watched recently, those are the ones that made this list, because they, they're just solid. Um, not too many things wrong with them, but they definitely increase in quality the further down the list that you go. Um, Nickelodeon has some of the best cartoons I've ever seen traditionally. They've got some of the best storylines, the best characters, just iconic moments, and quite frankly, sometimes they really beat Cartoon Network, and Cartoon Network's a solid network, but Nickelodeon and Nicktoons Network, I mean, that's, I know I'm going to have fun. That's the point, is I know I'm going to have fun with these shows. It's it's not going to be something that's overly serious. Unfortunately, I don't think I can say the same about the current crop of Nicktoons, but the, the shows that I listed... I can definitely say I'm going to have fun with those. Even the ones that I think lesser of, I know I'm going to have fun with. I think they're just a great time. So let me know what your list of Nicktoons are and what your memories of Nicktoons are. Uh, just keep in mind, if they're more recent, I most likely have not seen them and probably won't. Stuff like The Loud House and The New Transformers, and none of that. I don't, I don't pay attention to any of that. That's just, those aren't Nicktoons to me. That's just their own modern thing it's just i don't i don't particularly care i don't pick particularly pay attention but if you like them fair enough so thank you very much for watching this has been super Koopa tv i will see you guys in the next video god bless have a good one peace